What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and I'm here in Cuba shooting portraits and I thought I would walk you through some of my favorite tips for shooting travel portraits. Let's do it. So right now I'm in Trinidad, Cuba and one of the goals that I've had for Trinidad and all of Cuba to be honest is to shoot some really cool portraits of people here. And so on this episode I thought you, I would walk you through how I go about doing that and give you my, my favorite tips to doing that. Um, to start, I think I need to mention that there really are three types of travel portraits. So first you have street photography portraits which the subject might not know they're being photographed and the, the subject might actually be a small part of the image. It might be a subject walking in front of a beautiful mural or graffiti or something like that. Um, number two are headshots where the, the subject definitely knows they're being photographed. You're getting right up in their face and you're cropping their head or maybe just their shoulders up. Um, and then the third type is an environmental portrait and I shoot a lot of environmental portraits. I think that's what I like to shoot the most and it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a portrait of a person with a scene around them. So with their environment around them, whether it's the street, whether it's their office, whether it's their Casa Particular, their hotel here, um, something like that, that's a, an environmental portrait. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm here in Trinidad, as I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, and I'm shooting portraits. And I've been shooting portraits all over Cuba. So I'm going to give you examples from all over Cuba on this episode, although I'm gonna walk you through um, and give you the video from here in Trinidad. So right now I'm gonna take you through my eight favorite tips for shooting portrait photography and portrait photography specific to travel. In travel, we don't have the luxury of studios. We don't have the luxury of models. We don't have those luxuries. So we're doing things on the fly. And yeah, let's get around Trinidad here and I'll show you some of those tips. So tip number one I have for getting great portraits is to be confident. Not only are you going to want to be confident to actually get the portraits and have the guts to go up and ask somebody for their photo, but if you exude confidence, if you show confidence in your camera gear and yourself, it's going to put your subject at ease. It's going to make them feel much more comfortable in front of the camera. We've all been there where we've been standing in front of a camera and somebody's you know playing around with the camera not doing it very well and it just makes you more nervous that they're gonna make you look bad so be confident in front behind the camera and they'll be more confident in front of it So tip number two that I have is to be simple with your gear. If you're simple with your gear, it just makes the whole process a lot more simple. It means that you're not struggling with your equipment, you're not you know, flipping through lenses, you're not wasting time setting up flashes, you're finding natural light, you're shooting maybe one lens, I've got the 50 millimeter f1.4 today. And if you're not doing all those things, you're not flipping through gear, you're not packing a ton of gear and reflectors and everything, you're gonna make your subject feel more comfortable there as well. Tip number three is that composition is key. You can't just plug away images, shoot photos of people, and hope that they're powerful. You need to think about the composition. Think about every edge of the frame, think about the dominant eye in the photo, the rule of two thirds, how tight your crop is, what does the background look like? Things like that are really key to portraiture photography. It's not all about the face, it's about the composition as well. So the last tip goes a lot along with, with composition and that's that the background is important. You really need to think about what's in the background of your shot. Is there a frame of a door? Is it a clean background? Is it distracting to your foreground? You even need to think about things like is the color of the background, you know, complementary to the skin tones of the, of the person you're photographing. So don't discount the background. Sometimes the background is just as important as the foreground in portrait photography. So my next tip is to be diverse in your subjects. In a place like Cuba, it can be quite easy to just photograph the dudes with the cigars hanging out of the, their mouths, but that turns into a bit of a cliche after a while in photography. So try to photograph everybody, the women, the men, the children, the older people, the middle-aged people, the high school students. Be diverse in your subject base and you'll have a better portfolio because of it.
So the next tip is to also be diverse in your compositions. Um, don't just look at a subject and think, I'll bet you that would look cool and shoot only that. Start from farther away, start a bit wider, get the whole scene and then slowly work your way into a headshot and you'll have a variety of different images from the same subject. A lot of times when I'm out shooting, I'll think that one composition is the right one. I'll go home and look at the images on a bigger screen and I'll prefer something different. So shoot a lot of different style compositions of the same subject. So the next big tip when it comes to shooting portraits is it's all about the light. I mean, any kind of photography, it's about light. But it's especially important in travel photography, travel portrait photography, because you can't control as many things as you could if you were in a studio. You don't have reflectors, you often don't have flashes, you don't have anything. So you're looking for nice natural light. You're looking to be in shades, maybe with some natural light bouncing off of a building. You're even looking for the right color and temperature of light for the subject. So don't just shoot subjects, look at the light and try to manipulate their face so that it's in the right type of light. So you're getting the night, nice natural light coming across their face in the style that you want to exude the emotion you want. Um, yeah, it's all about light. So my last one isn't so much a tip, but more of a, a duty or a responsibility you have as a, as a travel photographer, as a human being really, and that's just to be respectful. If you're out taking photos of people, don't just shove your camera in their face. Always ask for permission if you're doing close up portrait style images and you're not shooting journalistically. Um, and if they don't want you to photograph them, be nice about it. Be cool with it. Some people don't want their photos taken. Don't take it personally. Anyways, that is it for the show here in in Cuba. I hope you learned a little bit something about portraiture photography and the way I like to shoot it. If you're interested in seeing these photos, be sure to head over to my website, brendansadventures.com, to see the portraits from Cuba and other images from around Cuba and around the world. As for me, I'm done here in Cuba now. I'm off to, uh, to Colombia for an episode and then I'm off to New York and then North America, well, Canada. So um, be sure to stay tuned and stay subscribed. I'll catch you next time. Peace.